It's a global wake-up call about just how close we may be to the brink of disaster. Antarctica, Antarctica. the most undiscovered continent on Earth, and for very good reasons. For very good. But events are now but unfolding are here now unfolding that here. may spell disaster may spell for the disaster. rest of the world. The Antarctica Challenge is a Canadian documentary that will be shown next week to the Conference on Climate Change in Copenhagen. It's the only film selected by the United Nations to be shown to some 190 world leaders and thousands of delegates as they work to draft a new global climate agreement. Mark Terry is the director of the film, and we are pleased to welcome him into our studios this morning uh, before your trip to Denmark, and then you're off. Yes, and that's on right. Way. Yeah. What, uh, it's really quite something that it's never been done before. They haven't screened a documentary like this at a climate you know, conference like Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to get it to be there in the first place? Well, um, I was actually phoning them just to see if, if I could participate in the conference, just go there and maybe do some follow-up interviews on, uh, on climate change with the scientists that are attending. Um, and then they asked, why? And I said, well, I had just done this documentary about Antarctica and the climate change study down there. And they said, really? Could you send us a copy? So I sent off a copy, and within six hours of them receiving it, I got a call saying we would like to show this to the conference. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And, you know, you are a journalist, reporter, have done a number mm -hmm. of different works in, your, in the, your career. What made you decide to, to take on this topic? Well, it was International Polar Year last year, and uh, there were lots of reports coming out of the Arctic because that's reasonably accessible. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see anything in the news about what's happening uh, to the studies in Antarctica. So I figured this is a good opportunity for me to uh, take a film crew down and do a report on it, as well as uh, <clears throat> complete my tour of the world by setting foot on the seventh continent. So. <laughs> what surprised you the most when you actually were there and you, you know, it's one thing to talk about it, it's another thing to be there and see. Oh, absolutely. The dramatic change. Yeah. What, what most surprised you? Well, it was probably the, um, the rushing water off the icebergs. Like most of us are used to seeing big, beautiful, you know, monolithic, majestic mm. icebergs. Uh, but these are falling apart. Um, there's rivers of water rushing down them um, as they're melting at a rate faster than we've ever seen before. So that was probably very surprising. And you do do a comparison basis in terms of, you know, where the coverage was and how thick the ice used to be. Yes, exactly. Well, there's one glacier alone that everyone is quite concerned about called Pine Island. And that's contributing 46 gigatons of fresh water into the world's seas every year. So that kind of rate is cause for alarm. And, and this is one of the key points that's going to be made in Copenhagen. Um, so we can prepare ourselves for the oncoming flooding. So there's, no, there's always um, going to be critics of climate change and mm -hmm. global warming, at least man-made anyway. Right. Um, you know, do you think that that's stopping the world from achieving you know, a, a, a framework before now. We waited so long, we may not even get to the framework that they are hoping to in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I, I definitely think that's, that's uh, a, an issue that's at the core of this whole uh, problem. But what, um, what I hope that they're going to accomplish is finding out some of the things that are of a, an imminent and immediate concern to the rest of the world. Um, not so much about the greenhouse gases, and mm -hmm. you know, that's more of a long-term solution. But when we look at things like um, like the melting and the flooding, that's something we have to address right now. Yeah. So it, mu it must be incredibly frustrating because you've seen it. Yes. You've seen the results of global warming and where this water is coming from. And in fact, in, in, in there is a basis of comparison and a little treat for the folks that watch the documentary <laughs> after the credits because, can you describe? Well, it was, uh, what I did was um, I wanted to dramatically demonstrate exactly how warm it was there. So um, I actually went for a little swim in the Antarctic Ocean. And, um, and the body of water that I swam in in Echo Harbor, we've got a clip of it here, right? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. Oh. <gasps> now, if you watch closely, you'll see some penguins swimming with me if you run this long enough. So, but it's cold, like it's cold. <laughs> The water was minus two. There, there's a penguin swimming with me, actually. <laughs> Good heavens. But your point was, there was you wouldn't even had access to the water no. before. No. Well, that's right. What I say at the beginning of this piece is that Neko Harbor was actually frozen solid five years ago. Now and so look. now it's not only liquid, but it's actually warm enough to swim in. So. Mark Terry got a big trip ahead. Thank you so yes. much for coming in and sharing some of your documentary with us. Thank you, Beverly. Take care. You too.